today we are going to discuss about imbalanced OPA1 processing and mitochondrial fragmentation causes heart failure in mice. We'll start with a brief introduction of mitochondria. Mitochondria are essential organelles that have the ability to efficiently generate ATP required to sustain normal cell function. Mitochondria are often considered the powerhouse of the cell. However, our understanding of the role of mitochondria in cell biology recently expanded when we recognized that they are the key platforms for the plenty of cell signaling cascades. This functional versatility is tightly coupled to constant reshaping of the cellular mitochondrial network in a series of processes collectively referred to as mitochondrial membrane dynamics involving fusion and fission. Fusion and fission are the key events regulating mitochondrial morphology that need to be balanced to support normal mitochondrial function and prevent disease. In mammalian cells, the fusion of mitochondria is regulated by two mitofusions, MFN1 and MFN2, which are located on the outer mitochondrial membrane, and OPA1, optic atrophy protein 1, that is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The fission of mitochondria is primarily orchestrated by the DRP1, dynamin-related protein 1, which translocates uh, from the cytosol to mitochondria, binding to its outer mitochondrial membrane partner, that is the receptor, uh, like we have a mitochondrial fission factor, mid-4951, and mitochondrial fission 1 protein. Uh, following this binding, DRP1 oligomerize and driveization, this has been shown to occur at sites where endoplasmic reticulum wrap mitochondria, which marks the mitochondrial fusion site. Fission and fusion of mitochondrial membrane occur in a coordinated manner. The dynamin like GTPs OPA1 mediates the mitochondrial fusion and orchestrates mitochondrial Christi remodeling and resistance to apoptosis in response to physiological demands. The processing of OPA1 is emerging as a central regulatory step coordinating fusion and fission of mitochondria. Now we will discuss about the mitochondrial proteases, what are their role in mitochondria. Mitochondrial proteases play an important role in protein maturation as they process newly formed proteins by cleaving its signal sequence. Mitoproteases have important role in quality control as well as they have an important regulatory function during mitochondrial biogenesis. Uh, these proteases recognize specific proteins with regulatory functions and preserve in this way both the biogenesis and the maintenance of mitochondrial activities. These regulatory functions really affect various aspects of mitochondrial biogenesis and functioning and the synthesis of uh, proteins within mitochondria ribosomal assembly, mitochondrial dynamics, quality control like mitophagy and apoptosis and so on and so forth. Now mitochondrial dynamics, as I mentioned already, mitochondria are highly dynamic organelles. They constantly fuse and divide and thus determine topology of mitochondria in a cell. These Fusion and fission events are very important to preserve mitochondrial activity. Uh, the uh, fusion uh, usually results in tubulation of mitochondria is considered as a pro-survival mechanism. It pushes mitochondrial activities, preserve mitochondrial integrity, whereas the fission is uh, associated with the mitochondrial quality control. Uh, fragmentation of mitochondrial network, for instance, allows the autophagic removal of damaged mitochondria. It separates them from from the tubular network and then can selectively remove damaged parts of this organelle and if it uh, comes to a state where it cannot uh, fix the problem anymore mitochondrial outer membrane is ruptured and pro-apoptotic proteins like cytochrome c are released from the intermembrane space triggering cell death. Uh, 
so uh, the fusion and fission therefore is very important for this maintenance of mitochondrial quality control uh, the reason why I am highlighting this is because the fragmentation of mitochondria is observed under many pathological conditions and keep in mind mitochondrial fragmentation can be brought about by both either by inhibiting uh, fusion in this way ongoing fission events will result in fragmentation or you can uh, stimulate fission and this will override the fusion of mitochondria in both cases resulting in mitochondrial fragmentation now i will tell you how mitochondria basically adapt to cellular citrus and various conditions that is actually under the control of proteases that reside within the mitochondria and that affect uh, the balance between fusion and fission now there are a whole set of proteases but the two proteases i am focusing on are the two guys here uh, these two proteases reside in the mitochondrial inner membrane one is termed as yme1l and the other one is oma1 YME1L is the ATP dependent protease, rather metalloprotease, uh, forms an hexameric ring complex and is a classical quality control enzyme. And OMA1 is a citrus activated metallopeptidase, also in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, these two proteases actually control a central player of the mitochondrial fusion machinery and that is OPA1. Now, fusion and fission of mitochondria is mediated by dynamin-like GTPases both acting on the outer mitochondrial membrane and the inner mitochondrial membrane and this is a central player of the fusion machinery in the inner mitochondrial membrane and is termed as OPA1 because mutation in this dynamin like GTPs is the most frequent case of inherited blindness in humans and this is how it was also discovered. These two proteases OMA1 and YME1L were shown to cleave OPA1 in two distinct sites so these are specific uh, that are close to each other that uh, these proteases cleave OPA1 converting it into long forms into short ones. If uh, we delete OMA1 here uh, you can basically abolish cleavage sites 1. This form C and E disappears and if we delete a second protease that is YME1L uh, then we selectively lose the cleavage products of uh, cleavage site second that is D form we uh, will not see that in our western blot and if we uh, delete both these proteases we are not seeing any processing of uh, OPA1 so uh, by these experiments so we can see that uh, uh, if we have a single knockout uh, that is uh, YME1L knockout uh, you will see that uh, there is uh, uh, the accumulation of uh, C and E form and uh, uh, we are not seeing any uh, D form and if we will delete uh, OMA1 uh, then we are uh, we are abolishing the cleavage site product 1 and we are not seeing uh, this C and E form and if uh, we will delete these two proteases that is we will make a, a double knockout of YME1L and OMA1 we are not seeing any processing uh, so by these experiments uh, it demonstrates that uh, these are the only proteases only two proteases uh, that really cleave this OPA1 uh, so L-OPA1 is sufficient enough to mediate uh, mitochondrial fusion and S-OPA1 mediates the mitochondrial fission. Uh, this uh, YME1L, uh, cardiac YME1L knockout triggers the fragmentation as it uh, activates the OMA1 and uh, leads to the formation of S-OPA1 from L-OPA1 and it shifts the balance uh, to mitochondrial fragmentation. Uh, this uh, OMA1 is a citrus activated peptidase. It cleaves L-OPA1 which is active in uh, fusion and uh, in this case inhibits 
uh, fusion and it also in this case uh, accumulates SOPA1 which is activating fission and uh, in this case OMA1 activation results in mitochondrial fragmentation with an N-terminal sensor domain that is important for this response and after this response uh, OMA1 degrades itself basically it ensures the reversibility of uh, this response only if you have um, persistent mitochondrial citrus then uh, this basically results in the persistent mitochondrial fragmentation which is associated with the cell death. Tim and uh, his uh, group then specifically knocked out a YME1L in cardiomyocytes and examined uh, the requirement of YME1L for the functioning of uh, the heart which is a metabolically demanding organ sensitive to disruption of mitochondrial shape. Uh, cardiac YME1L knockout mice uh, were viable but had a significantly shortened lifespan uh, punctuated by weight loss before their demise which suggested that YME1L is required for normal heart function. They uh, then examined uh, heart function from an early embryo up to 40 weeks of age in cardiac YME1L knockout mice. Echocardiographic analysis uh, revealed progressive cardiac dysfunction which became apparent at 20 weeks and was characterized by hallmarks of dilated cardiomyopathy. So various uh, characteristics of dilated cardiomyopathy including a typical shift in metabolism that is observed or has uh, been observed in uh, other mouse models uh, for mitochondrial dysfunction and this is a shift in metabolism from the utilization of fatty acids to glucose utilization and this uh, we could basically show by PET scan uh, where we basically see that uh, the YME1L knockout mice has significantly increased uh, in the glucose uptake in the heart and uh, we also see a reduced level of cardiac acyl carnitines uh, which indicates reduced beta oxidation in YME1L deficient cardiomyocytes. So this all illustrates uh, that there is a shift from the utilization of uh, fatty acids uh, to glucose um, as you can see uh, from this PET scan, uh, wild type versus uh, cardio, uh, cardiac YME1L knockout. Uh, these uh, cardiac YME1L knockout have uh, an increased uptake of uh, glucose uh, in these mice and as I said it is a really typical sign of cardiomyopathy that uh, are associated with the dysfunction of mitochondria. So what they did in order to restore mitochondrial morphology and myocardial function in the absence of YME1L uh, they knocked out OMA1 which is a citrus activated peptidase uh, which was cleaving L-OPA into S-OPA uh, which uh, what, what they observed uh, when they deleted OMA1 uh, they observed a restored mitochondrial morphology and myocardial function in the absence of YME1L. They also observed uh, suppression of dilated cardiomyopathy and heart failure by dietary interventions that is by feeding a high fat diet uh, suppresses uh, heart failure and uh, restores the lifespan of uh, cardiac YME1L mice. This was all about the imbalanced processing of OPA1 and uh, mitochondrial fragmentation which causes uh, the heart failure in mice.